extremely well fed and extremely happy. I think I think my show is the nearest you can get to a football team being up on a stage with the emotion and the feedback you get from the crowd. railway in my house. My parents and my dad asked my dad when I was 14 to buy me a station for this model railway and instead he bought me a guitar for no apparent reason. And so that was my first encounter with music. I've been away from you a long time. I never thought I'd miss you so. Somehow I feel your love is real. Near you I I've always be. been a kid. I still am a kid. My mother and father and my family used to play Al Jolson records in the 50s, and that's when I was growing up. And so I was really influenced by Al Jolson. you're calling me. how I love you, how I love you, my I don't think I was made up to be a soccer player. I don't think I was committed enough to it. Um, and the musical side came along accidentally. There wasn't a decision to go either way at the time. I was too young, I was 15 or 16. I didn't know what I wanted to do. The first band I was in was when I was at school and it was called the Cool Cats, which was spelt with two Ks, Cool Cats. And we used to play a lot of skiffle music, a uh, thing by Lonnie Donegan and uh, uh, that sort of stuff. Do you remember that? We used to have a, uh, a, a tea chest as a bass with a stick. And you sing things like this. Takes a worried man to sing a worried song. Oh, Lord, it takes a worried man to sing a worried song. We used to sing things like that. First record was, uh, oh, what was my first record? First solo record was Good Morning Little Schoolgirl, which was, uh, I believe, an old Howling Wolf or Muddy Waters song. Wasn't it Sonny Boy Williamson? That's what I said. I said Sonny Boy Williamson. Um, but it wasn't a hit because the Yardbirds covered it at the same time. Come on, a little school girl. Come on, a little school girl. I cannot come home. I cannot come home to you. Tell your mama and your papa. When Jimmy Pearl, I was asked to join Long John Baudry's blues band that was known as the Hoochie Coochie Ladies. Uh, and then from there I went on to the Steam Packet, from the Steam Packet, Shotgun Express, and from there I went on to the Jeff Beck group. Listen, you can rock me, rock me all night long. Keep on rocking me, baby, rock me all night long. It started probably when I was with the Jeff Beck group and realizing that people and critics like my voice and my style, and it just goes on from there and there. No one actually sits down and says, you've got a great voice. 
you know, become a singer. It's just, it's all chance, luck, and accident. Way down in the country. Keep on rolling, baby. Jeff decided uh, on a whim and a moment of rash decision that he should fire Ronnie Wood and Nicky Waller. And Woody, Ronnie Wood and I are very close and we still are extremely close. And I said, if Woody goes, I go. So then Woody joined the small faces that became the faces and they didn't have a singer. And Ronnie Wood said, why don't you come and sing with this lot? Because we haven't got a singer. And so I said, okay, I'll, I'll join the faces. I think the main faces probably was was me and me and Ronnie Wood, but uh, we didn't set out to do that. I mean, that's the way it became. Anybody was a leader of the faces, I would say it was Ronnie Lane. And when Ronnie Lane left the band, which I think was 74, that's when the band started to disintegrate because he was the faces. He was the spirit, he was the drinker, he was the joke teller, and he was the humor of the group. The only hit record we wrote together was uh, Stay With Me, which was with the faces. In the morning, don't say you love me, cause I'll only kick you out of the door. I know your name is Rita, cause your perfume is smelling sweet. Since when I saw you down on the floor. Nothing to left for me. A red lips, hair and fingernails. I hear you're a mean old jazz 
Ron Wood and I were not hit makers. And Maggie May was not written with Ron Wood, and nor was Wear It Well, and nor has anything else been since. Sooner or later, I think there was a little bit of animosity there that split the band up eventually. The solo career was there before mm -hmm. the faces, you know. I was contracted and I wanted to make my own records. There were certain things that the faces couldn't play and didn't want to play, and there were certain things that I wanted to sing. Especially in Great Britain, with the Falkland Islands, and because uh, it was adopted as the tune for the forces that went down to the Falkland Islands.
I was the producer of my own albums, there was a, a definite direction, which there weren't with the faces. In the fa when we made an album with the faces, we'd go down to the pub and stay there for four hours and record for half an hour. Whereas with my albums, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. There was a direction. first two or three albums didn't sell. And everything else has sold extremely well. I aim to please the public, not the critics. And I also want to please myself. You can never please rock critics. I'd shoot them all if I had my way. So stay the same for the rest of your life, you know? But I'm getting older as you're getting older. I'm just improving my persona. <laughs> How's that? I wouldn't have changed anything. The only thing I would have changed probably was the album cover of uh, Night on the Town, you know, where I was wearing the straw boat. And I don't think that was me. That was a bad period of my life I went through there. I don't think that was actually me. In that. I was believing all the press that I was reading. Georgie! back on it, uh, someone as straight as I am to write a song like that. It was clumsy in parts, lyrically, but uh, I'm very proud of it. In my heart, you're in Yeah. 
can't get married and have two children and it not affect your life. Of course it affects you. It's, uh, I'm not too sure how it's affecting me just yet. Who's that knocking on my door? I don't, I don't know. Listen, it's... Sex is really all in the mind. Sex appeal is all in the mind. Sometimes I'll just get a title for a song. Sometimes I'll just get a theme, a melody. They're just thousands of different words.
you get everything in perspective, you know, um, fast cars and what have you and running around the world, it's not very important. I, right now, I would, I would probably give my right arm to my kids. I love them that much. And I never ever thought, I don't think anyone, anybody would have heard Rod Stewart say that. I love my kids so much. They're what? an inspiration for me. Hollywood, Iceland. What you got to get in your head is the music counts. What's in the grooves counts. you 
There's been so many highlights, there's been too many, probably I would still say the highlight is when you get your first number one single on your number one album.
sense of humour. We've got no, no sense of humour. No sense of humour.
must leave Oh, surely die Put me on a train In the pouring rain Say farewell But don't say goodbye See the carry me Over land and sea To my own folk That's where I wanna be The most honest thing is to, is to write what you feel from your heart. But forget fashion, forget what's popular. If you can just write from your heart, I think that means a lot. Music, football, it's still two ways for a poor kid to get out of the streets. Whether it's uh, Holland or whether it's Brazil or wherever it is, it's still two ways to get out of the streets. And I was lucky, I had a shot of both ways.
can never stop achieving in music or rock and roll. It's uh, you learn something every day. And I, I feel right now, at my age, I could keep going on making records for the rest of my life. <laughs> Just one favor I'll be asking you, don't bury me here, it's too cold. 